Shockwaves just hit the real estate industry that could have a major impact on real estate photography and also other media like real estate videos and floor plans and tours. But it's not all bad news because some of this could be actually a windfall for a lot of real estate photographers. There's two things that are happening right now and they are stemming from this lawsuit that found that the National Association of Realtors in the United States, which is huge. They have 1.5 million members. They have ties to realtor.com and they also oversee almost every single one of the multiple listing services, the MLSs in the United States. This lawsuit found them actually guilty of unfair practice for doing something that's been going on for decades and now that they've been found to be in violation of unfair practices and inflated prices because of this, things are going to change inevitably. And this is just the tip of the iceberg because this particular lawsuit is just the first in a series of lawsuits that are now coming out. And this particular one just awarded these home sellers who had the civil class action lawsuit against uh, not just the National Association of Realtors, but other brokerages like Keller Williams. They were awarded $1.8 billion. Yes, that is billion with a B fining the National Association of Realtors and other brokerages having these unfair business practices of allowing the seller's agent to charge what they would have to give a buyer's agent in these real estate commissions. So here's how it goes and how it's been going on for decades if you're not familiar with this practice. What would happen is I'm, let's say, a home seller. So I'm gonna find a listing agent and they're gonna charge me about a 6% commission in the United States. Now, I realize that other countries have flat fees, but this is real common in the United States and it's going to have a ripple effect in other countries as well because of what's gonna come out of this. I'll get to that in just a second. But if I were to pay this 6% commission on, let's say, a home that was $500,000, then that means that I would be paying my listing agent $30,000. But that's because half of that, about 3% of that, will probably go to the buyer's agent. So whoever comes in to buy my house, that agent representing that buyer would get half or so of that commission. Now, sometimes it's split to where it's like 4%, 2%, whatever like that, and it's somewhat negotiable, but those terms are often hidden. But here's the real big catch, is that in today's day and age, of all these listing sites that are out there like Zillow and Realtor.com and Redfin, all those websites, if I'm looking for a home, I'm probably not gonna need a buyer's agent. So there might be a buyer's agent that steps in and goes, hey, this is quick money, let, let me represent you. But as far as the plaintiffs were awarded in this particular lawsuit and the other ones that are coming out right now, what it means is why am I, as a home seller, paying all this money to an agent representing a buyer when they could have just found somebody online. And there's a ripple effect that's starting to happen from this. Let's say, for instance, that there was no buyer agent involved. Now, you could negotiate with your realtor, you being the person listing the house, you could uh, definitely talk your realtor into a commission, maybe 4% if you don't have to split the commission or a 5%, something like that. That can be difficult to do and you have to be real hard nosed about it. But what's more is that since somebody's paying the 6% commission and the listing agent was only gonna get three if it was split, then well, why don't I just pay this 3% commission and not worry about buyer's agents at all? This is where then the unfair business practice came in where inflating these prices, we're seeing, yeah, if I'm selling a $500,000 home, I'm paying $30,000 in fees compared to $15,000 in fees. Now, take that to an average home right now, just an average tract home in many communities in Southern California and double it because most homes are around a million dollars right now in this inflated market, which is really pissing off a lot of home sellers and home buyers. If I'm a home seller selling a house for a million dollars, I'm paying out $60,000 in real estate commissions. And that just is seen as unfair not just by this plaintiff, but the Department of Justice is starting to get involved as well. And I'll get to that in just a second. 
But the other lawsuits that are happening right now are just coming out of the woodwork because I think a lot of them were waiting for this litigation to see how it would actually pan out. Well, now it's gonna be hard to put the genie back in the bottle. It's gonna be hard to turn back the clock and go back to where things were once before. So this particular lawsuit is known as the Sitzer lawsuit. There's also Moral lawsuit and all these others named after the head plaintiff in some of these cases. But those lawsuits, once again, just being the tip of the iceberg because now the Department of Justice got wind of this and they're thinking that there are some antitrust violations that are going on. And whenever the Department of Justice of the United States gets involved in something, something's gonna happen. They just don't walk away from something and investigate something for years and go, oh, that's fine. Just ask Microsoft that question and see what they say about that. But on top of that, Earlier this year, Remax settled out of court. You might think, well, that isn't so bad compared to the 1.8 billion, but what it did was it set a legal precedence of assumed guilt. So if you're settling out of court, that means you're not actually stating innocence, you're not really stating guilt. You can say that it's a no contest type of a thing, but it's gonna be real hard to now fight these lawsuits, which no doubt they're gonna be going into appeals, but things will be changing so much so that I know some of my colleagues in other states are telling me how realtors are not renewing their licenses or they're also representing only the sellers and they don't wanna represent buyers. So this is where it starts affecting real estate photographers it's going to be a domino effect. It's gonna start with the fact that the pool of realtors will start drying up. If you're not a very qualified realtor, that means that you probably aren't getting listings very often. And those are the ones that are so stereotyped throughout the real estate photography industry where, oh, all realtors are cheap. No, there's just so many realtors that try it for a year or two, they don't make it and they fall out because all they were doing was representing buyers of people that they knew and never really had that many listings. And when they would get a listing and they would hire a photographer, they would cheap out because they didn't see the long game. So the long game realtors, the ones that you always wanna target when it comes to real estate photography and media in general are the established ones that know how to get listings because of one basic principle, and that's that it's not that the media so much sells the house, which it does help, no doubt about it, but the primary principle is that the media sells the agent. So as the watering hole starts to dry up for all these realtors with buying agents not really being part of the equation anymore, those agents, those realtors, are going to fight harder to try to get listings. Now, one of the biggest selling points that a lot of these agents will use is, look how well I can represent your property and market it to make sure that I get the highest dollar possible out of it. After all, if you're paying 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars to a realtor, then yes, your expectations are going to be fairly high. So as agents try to compete for themselves, against themselves, I should say, to try to get those listings, what they'll inevitably do is up their game in a number of ways. And one of the easy ways to up your game is to get more professional looking media. But that isn't really a boon for every single real estate photographer because you're gonna have to stand out. You're gonna have to be good. And I've said this numerous times on all my videos, I think, is that you gotta get good. You gotta get really, really good. Now, luckily, that is something I can help you with. Besides all the various YouTube videos that I have here on my channel, you probably know that I also have online courses where you can learn real estate photography. I've got courses on doing professional interior real estate photography. I've got courses on doing the expert editing and also the pro exteriors. And if you're looking for those, description has links to all that along with bundles. Look for those so you can get discounted price on buying more than one course at a time. But I also have some books on real estate photography and some of those have been bestsellers. So between that and practicing a lot more and learning your skills and practicing your skills to really up your game, that puts you on the leading edge of getting better work over the long term with these changes that are now happening, forcing a higher competition rate among the realtors vying for listings. 
Now, that was the first issue that I mentioned. The second one is also stemming from this. It worked as kind of the straw that broke the camel's back or at least strained it because already this year, the big sites like Zello.com and Redfin and whatnot, they were already hurting because of low inventory, fewer people were going out to their websites, mortgage rates being so high made it harder for these people to buy houses. So their stocks were already starting to go down into the toilet this year and with this new ruling, investors got spooked. And so their stocks started dropping even further. So what does that mean then for Zillow going forward, for Redfin going forward? Well, the biggest one of concern for real estate photographers has been, as you know, Zillow because of their acquisition of VRX Media. Recently, they also acquired Aereo. And Zillow even had a small layoff here in just the last couple weeks. Nothing big, but once again, showing that they're constantly trying to pare down what they have because it's a difficult market. And with that then, that also means that these Zello photographers, there's no raise in sight. <laughs> there's no way, It'd be based on what's happening with Zello stock going down and all that, once again, that gives you even more leverage to start attracting these listing agents. And by the way, listing agents in general, if you don't know this already, most of them despise Zillow. Why? Because they'll list a house, but somebody else gets the call. Well, Zillow isn't putting the listing agent always up first. It might be one of their preferred agents who's paying Zillow to get that top position so that they get a phone call because up until now, they've been able to get half of the commission when somebody sells a house, but that is about to change. So no matter what, moral of the story is, you gotta stay good. You gotta be really, really good because competition is gonna be stronger among realtors to vie for listings. And you are in a position to leverage that to be able to provide the highest quality media possible in your area to ensure that you're the vendor that gets hired to do the photography, the video, and all of that. Now this is still underway. There's definitely going to be some appeals, but if you start planning for the future now, then you'll pre be prepared when the future does come. And as always, I'll stay on top of it and I'll keep you posted.